You'll find the text in Psalms chapter number 9 tonight. <clears throat> Appreciate the good singing around here, don't you? The choir took those uh, good selections out of the Red Book. That honors me, and I appreciate that. Long live the Red Book, and I appreciate it. the good choir selects special music, good congregational spirit. Corporate worship is a spiritual practice. It's a scriptural practice. Everybody ought to be involved when you worship God. We've gotten to a point of delegated worship. We pick out a few to do it for us, the praise team and such as that. But let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That's scriptural. If you can breathe tonight, you've got a scriptural license to praise God. And uh, I'm glad of that tonight. Praise the Lord. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Say amen. And, uh, we're thankful tonight. I appreciate the stand this great church takes and the influence it has across the world, not just nationally. But I am proud to be an American. Boy, those flags just sent chill bumps up and down my body when I pulled on this place. I'm an American without apology. And I thank the Lord. But now, to just to be politically correct, don't call me a hillbilly. You'll have to call me an Appalachian American. Say amen. <laughs> I appreciate the courtesy there. I laugh now because it's going to get pretty tight here directly. Page 602 in a Schofield reference edition of the Bible. I read this psalm. The theologians say that David writes this psalm at the conclusion of the great victory of Goliath. He's beheaded this giant, and he pins this psalm of praise and victory. I don't know that that's the case. That's what the men much wiser than me have said. But no doubt David, a man after God's own heart, had experienced many victories. He was not a stranger to conquest as a child in the shepherd's field. It might have been a reflection of a dead bear or a dead lion. It might have been a reflection of other days of victory. You know, Saul had killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. Uh, he was victorious. He was a, a man of victory. And he writes these words in Psalms 9, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I'll show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. <clears throat> I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in the throne judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O oh, thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities, their memorial is perished with them. But the big L Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they have made, and in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, and let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. See law. Our Heavenly Father, I'm grateful tonight for this blessed opportunity that you've given me to be here. I don't take it for granted. 
I, I'm, I'm honored and I pray that you'd help me. I stand where the arm of flesh has failed me and will fail me. These preachers that have uh, gathered here this week, they're no stranger to that reality that we are, we're powerless without the unction of the Holy Ghost. And the best way I know how, I yield myself to you. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, it's my desire to please you. I pray God Almighty you'd give me words to say and wisdom. I pray you'd give me backbone to say everything that I ought to say tonight. At this crucial time in our nation's history and our church's progress, I pray God Almighty you give me backbone and courage to say everything I ought to say. And then I ask for discerning wisdom not to say anything that wouldn't bring glory and honor uh, to, the, to the name of our Lord and Savior and to promote the cause of Christ. Lord, if there be any lost and undone in this building, I, I realize that would probably be a small crowd, but if there's any here, we're concerned about their soul. And I pray for old-timey Holy Ghost conviction to show them their need of a Savior tonight. Let tonight be the last night they're lost. And for the call, I pray God Almighty you would let us leave this building with an intense desire to serve you. Much more intense than we came through the doors. Thank you for what has been preached. Bless what will be preached. For we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may long live the old-time way, we pray. Amen. I read this story of the psalmist and I can almost see in my, my mind's eye, he's wiping off the blood from the spear. He's wiping off the blood from the sword. He may be rolling around those stones in his pocket. He's looking at that sling and the, the slain giant laying there motionless. And I see victory. Uh, let, let me remind you tonight that uh, the cause of Christ is about winning. Amen. We're not about losing. Uh, I know political correctness has, has saturated our intellect today and everybody thinks they're a winner. Everybody thinks they're American Idol, you know. I mean, we got people in our church can't carry a tune in a bucket. They think their children are all uh, prodigies. Are y'all listening to me? I, I mean, everybody thinks, but, but honestly, uh, you're going to win or you're going to lose. And I'm glad I'm on the winning side. I read Revelations 19 just this week, and we are coming back on white horses. Yeah. Upon his head will be many crowns, and his vesture will be, be dipped in blood on his thigh, I'll be written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, and out of his mouth is going to come a sharp two-edged sword. And by the way, God has highly exalted him. Yeah. Had given him a name that's above every name. Uh, had it the name of Jesus, every knee should bow uh, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Don't, don't, don't hang your head too low. We're winners. Amen. I don't care how it looks, how outnumbered we may be. It's a straight way and it's a narrow way. And few there be that find it. I'm not looking for a big crowd. I, I'm looking for a narrow crowd. Amen. That's Matthew. That's in the King James. And, and we're still winning. Let me just remind you, it was Noah, three sons, three daughters-in-laws, and a wife. They were winners. They were well outnumbered by popularity and population. I'm talking about they were politically incorrect as they could be. But when the rain started falling, everybody wished they'd been on their side. Amen right there. And it's no question that historically that the church of the living God has been involved in the history of America. I mean, that's not even questioned in history. Though today the progressives want to erase our memory, the truth is it's still in God we trust on our currency. It's still one nation under God. I like the way that sounds. One nation under God, and, and I believe without any controversy, we'd all concur tonight that, that what's taken place in the near 250 years of our nation's existence, there's been a spiritual link to all that we do. Amen. Don't get nervous, but you can be a whosoever will man and still believe in the sovereignty of God. I believe a sovereign God had a plan. Just like He chose Abraham. Uh, out of obscurity at the Ur of the Chaldees, 
and promised him land that was not his. Don't get nervous. I'm preaching the Bible tonight. Amen. I mean, he gave to him a possession that he'd had no title on, but he said, wherever your foot touches the ground, I'm going to give it to you. As it was with the exodus from Egypt, he said, you cross the Jordan River, it's all yours. Well, there's walled cities over there, and there's Philistines, yeah, but they're heathen people and they're godless. And I'm going to let y'all win. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The Bible said we're more than conquerors through him. Don't forget, we're winners. I just want to praise God we're winning. It's no question, there's no, no argument that in our recent conflicts nationally, I mean, Islam and Christianity. Though blinded most Americans are, across the globe, the nation of America is identified as the Christian nation. The Muslims see us as the infidels. And you can say what you will and try to undermine and try to uh, replace the problem, but jihad is the problem. It's a spiritual conflict. It's not about oil. People don't blow themselves up and fly airplanes into large buildings because of oil prices. That, that's martyrdom. That's a spiritual connection. Amen. Uh, that, that, is a, that is a spiritual warfare. And this very hour, we're engaged unbeknownst by maybe some of the, the leaders of our military. We engage in a spiritual war. Now, the church's weapons are not carnal. We know that. Uh, under the pulling down of stronghold, but they're spiritual weapons. But the church is in connection. God's blessed America because of the church. Amen. We're winners. I look back on 9-11 10 years ago, the goal behind two airplanes flying into those trade centers and those monuments to our capitalism and our, our work ethic. Somebody say amen for work ethic and capitalism. Uh, the monument to, to our nation's uh, labor through the years and its great wealth and blessing from God was attacked. That's a spiritual attack. And their goal was to defuse Christianity. They'd love to see uh, the Bible denounced and the Koran embraced. They'd love to see uh, Sharia law exercised and justice uh, uh, eliminated. But, but we met last Sunday. I baptized three. Two more were saved in the morning service. I don't know how many in Super Church. And I just want to say to the Iranians, I want to say to the Arabs, look up in here, Hoss. I want to say to the enemies of Israel, I want to say to the enemies of peace, the enemies of democracy, the enemies of freedom, I'd like to say we're still winning this thing. I know what you intended, but we met the next Sunday. In fact, it backfired on them the year of uh, 2000, that great uh, year of memory we look back. On 9-11, uh, the doors of many churches were open. The congregation's crowd began to increase because of the attack. I'm saying to you, the present day conflict, we must, I mean, we must agree it's a spiritual warfare. I go back to Vietnam and the Asian conflicts. Communism is an enemy to the scripture. Communism is an enemy to the scripture. I mean, it's still red China as far as I'm concerned. China has always aided, as well as Russia, has always aided the enemies of America. That's not some kind of a hard to understand thing. That's what everybody knows. And don't put words in my mouth. I never said I hated Russia, but I said I'm against Russia. Somebody help me. And I'm against North Korea. And I'm against China. And I'm against communist China. That's all of it. Somebody say amen. Help me somebody. I thought y'all were Americans in here. Help me. And I'm against, I'm against North Vietnam. And I'm against the enemies of Israel. Amen. 
There's no such thing. Look at me. I'm telling you as moderate Islam. Every single Muslim is as kin to a terrorist as a pig is a sow. Somebody say amen. 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 Wake up here. I'm going to try to preach directly. But those days were days I believe we could link it to spiritual conflict. The Bible's not a book of communism. It's a book of labor. It's a book of, you, you by the sweat of your brow, you'll eat your bread. You go back in our history. World War II. World War II. Without a conflict, it was, without any argument, Japan is a Buddhist nation. I'm talking about Japan as a Buddhist nation. I'm talking about pot belly, ball-headed Buddha. I'm anti-Buddhism. And when you come to America, leave that idol where it came from. Yeah. It's not a Buddhist nation. When it said, in God we trust, they wasn't talking about Buddha or Allah. It was, it was the God of the King James Bible they penned. It's God the Father. And God the Son. And God the Holy Ghost. That's who they identified as their deity. There was no Allah. There was no Buddha involved. Say what you want to, Japan represents an emperor who promoted Buddhism. There was no option about religion in Japan at that time. You were a Buddhist or you died. That's direct conflict with the position of America. Needless to say, Hitler. The extermination of the Jewish race was his goal. If there's ever been a conflict. With scriptural position. I'll bless them that bless thee. And I'll curse them that curse thee. I just want to say. We won. I mean hey. Don't get excited about it. I mean just don't be prideful. But hey a rooster rolled crow in his own barn. You ought to wring his neck and make chicken and dumplings out of him. Somebody say amen. We won. Hey, don't get nervous. We won. Adam bomb. We won this thing. Hitler who? Jews still here. Israel's still a nation. We won. We winners. God's side won. Let's go to the Civil War. Our nation's conflict. I'm a southerner. Praise God to the top of my head, the sole of my feet. I mean, listen, I have a hard time with Yankees. I, I don't even like to hear Yankees talk. I'd rather hear a chainsaw run on a bad mix. Caster, praise the Lord, you guys. You, you, you preachers from the south are so awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It's so awesome, you guys. I just start, ah. It ain't guys. I've declared war on guys. Guys sounds effeminate. It's y'all. The plural of y'all is all y'all. The possessive of y'all is y'all's. Is that y'all's? If you're from East Tennessee, it's Yuns. Yunses. You guys. Man, nothing sounds more effeminate than a southerner saying, guys. What was I talking about? Oh. I got in that deep spiritual depth right there. The well of knowledge. It's not about states' rights. This international conflict. It, 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 you, you try to turn it all you want to. It's about morality. To own another is immoral. Amen. The promotion of slavery. One male fathering hundreds of children by various women. That's totally out of line with the scripture. That's immorality. Say what you will. I like Dixie, but his truth is marching on. God won that thing. The abolishment of slavery. 
was an act of spiritual things. It's deeper, deeper than any political argument. It's deeper than cotton and industry. It's deeper than states' rights. It's called immorality versus right. Spiritual conflict. Amen. 1776. Fourth of July. Somebody say hallelujah. I tell you, a bunch of wig-wearing Englishmen. Somebody say amen. I can't stand to hear that bunch talk either. Somebody help me. I mean, I canceled my insurance with that guy called humpback lizard. Somebody say amen. I ain't buying a bunch of insurance, somebody talking like that. Somebody help me. I went back to Farm Bureau. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. <laughs> the gecko British lizard. Somebody help me. Oh, wait a minute. Aren't you glad we won? We won that thing. Don't get excited. Look at me up in the balcony. Don't get mad. But we beat Britain. They have no loyalties to Britain. Not one blessed fired loyalty to England. I believe in the sovereignty of America. I said I was an American a while ago. If y'all ain't, if you ain't gonna say amen, go take them flags down, you're a hypocrite. Somebody say amen. Hey man! Don't you wave your little British flag around me. Take your wig off and act like one of us. Somebody say amen. Hey man! We won. I'm going to preach directly. What I'm saying is we won. It was a divine purpose that we won. It's not by accident that we won. There was a spiritual connection. Hey, one nation under God. One nation under God. In God we trust. God favored the church. We're not going to pay a bunch of Anglican taxes to an Anglican church. We ain't the church of England. We Baptist people. Baptist people don't pay tithes to the England church. We don't pay tithes to the Anglican church. We pay tithes to the local New Testament visible body. And so conflict raged. You say Tea Party this and taxation without ribbon. I know all that. Look up in here. It's about right and wrong. And right won that thing. But here they come in Puritans. Mayflower, Santa Maria, Penta. They land on this. I believe even the elements fought them to get here. I believe there's a conflict with the elements. Y'all hear me? The devil was against Puritans reaching this soul. America has propagated more evangelism, more missions. There's been more work of God that has been birthed from the souls of America than all the combined nations on this globe. And I believe with all my heart the winds begin to blow in contrary. I, I believe the devil himself uh, has stood out on the sea and said, I don't want them boats to get there. I don't want them Puritans to land. They got a book. They got a black book in that ship. Uh, hey, they got a book that represents the God I'm against. Uh, I don't want them to land. I don't want them to land. But we won. Pocahontas and all of it. Amen. We won. The Native American. Don't get nervous. We're getting close to the quick now. Everybody all right? They're heathen people. Totem pole worshipers. Sun god worshipers. They're the heathen that the psalmist writes about. Y'all getting awful quiet. I was working in British Columbia for six months, interim there. Went, went by a powwow. I never felt more evil than that new age bunch of Indians. I'm talking about you could smell grass burning. I'm talking about there's marijuana. So I was getting high on secondhand smoke. I thought I saw Geronimo riding a spotted horse. Hey, 
That's pagan. Ain't no Bible for a bunch of that ain't even cute. That's as satanic as bless God a witch riding a broom. Amen. I don't care what Texas Walker Ranger says about it. Somebody say amen. They're heathen. If it had not been for the white man, they would have been extinct because of smallpox. They ought to be glad we landed. Don't get nervous. They'd all died. Is there, and none of them would have been evangelized. They'd all been on the road to hell. It's preaching time, and I get a little kink every time I get right here, you know. You probably voted for Obama if you're having trouble with this. I'm glad the cowboys won. There's a bunch of liberals over here. I said, I'm glad the cowboys won this thing. Amen. God was in that. God, without any question, exercised his omnipotence and that we're still here. For nearly 300 years, this nation's faced adversity. I don't know what it holds, but as long as there's a church planted, as long as there's a body of believers here, you can count on one thing, God ain't going anywhere. Amen. Notice these words of the psalmist. I believe this psalm is written with three basic truths that are, that are permeating from the words. I, I see, first of all, a psalm of thanksgiving. Let me, let me just stop and say to America, to Baptist people, we ought to be a, a little more excited about what God has done for us. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of the negative. I'm tired of the pessimism. Well, we got a liberal in this, and the politician of this, and it's all good. And look at the economy. Yeah, but we could be in hell. No, don't forget, I know it's a bad economy, but, but we could have, we could, we could be, we could have been born in Iran somewhere. Uh, we could have been born in some third world country without a message of the gospel. But look up here, good news. Uh, hey, friend of mine, Jesus Christ died on a cross. Uh, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Uh, he rose again the third day. You heard the message. You got passed from death unto life. You got regenerated and born from above. Hey, don't get excited or anything, you're only going to live as long as God lives. Stay calm. We're only going to live forever. It can't get too bad for us to praise God. Well, the demons are subject to us, Lord. We've been casting out these devils. Jesus, boy, it was on. Them devils, they, they'd fallen out of people. And he said, rejoice not that demons are subject. But rather rejoice that your name's been written in the Book of Life. Gratitude ought to be high on the list of priorities of Bible-believing people. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hey, there ought to be some thanksgiving about God. In light of this history that we enjoy, in light of the great blessings that we experience this present day, I think it's a blessing when he says, I will uh, praise thee, O Lord, uh, with my whole heart. Uh, I'll show forth all thy marvelous works. Uh, I'll be glad and rejoice in thee. I'll sing praise of thy name when my enemies are turned back. I want to say we won. It was Calvary, wasn't it? A bloody place. The enemy was surrounding the cross. Make sure he dies. They followed the crowd to the borrowed tomb. They rolled the stone at the mouth of the sepulcher. They put guards by, because you know how these Baptists are. They liable to come dig him out. But on the third and appointed day, 
when the, when the stone rolled away, the rock of ages walked out. And he said, he ever liveth to make intercession. Let me just say, we won. Don't ever get over it. I, I'm, I'm amazed that people have been saved five or six years to get, get over it. I don't want to get over being saved. When my enemies are turned back, I'll praise thee. Notice real quick, we ought to praise God, verse 3, because they shall fall and perish at thy presence. There, there ought to be some praising God tonight for his tangible presence. I know we're, we're accompanied here with uh, some high level of academia, but let me tell you something, you can feel God. Don't, don't try to tell me something as big as God moves in you and you don't know he's there. I wasn't long ago, I was witnessing to a fellow and, and he said, oh, I've been saved for years and just found out. <laughs> do, do, do what, sir? Oh, yeah, I was saved for years. I just found out I was saved. You trying to tell me you got resurrected from the dead spiritually? You're trying to tell me that you got regenerated and born from above? You're trying to tell me that you was dead and got quickened? You're trying to tell me you got adopted into a family? You're trying to tell me you got engaged to be married to Jesus? You're trying to tell me you was engrafted in like a wild olive branch? You're trying to tell me all that happened to you and you didn't know nothing happened? Hey, my hind leg, bless God. Something big as God, you're going to know he shows up. I just want to praise him for his presence. It's not all the time that I feel him, but I always want to feel him. It's not all the time that his presence is, is so real to me, but I want to praise him for the times I, I, that he has shown up in my life. I, I'm talking about the times I, when I mounted the pulpit under a burden I, and mounted the pulpit with weight on my mind and shoulders I, and praise be unto God. I, that blessed paraclete, I, that Holy Ghost came by and walked along beside me and helped me. Well, hey, I want to praise him that in the wee hours of the morning, I, in the Midnight hour of my life. Huh? And God's never been hard to find. Somewhere standing in the shadows you'll find Jesus. They sang it and you'll know him by the nail prints in his hand. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but he's real. He's real. We're sitting in the funeral home back in 1985, I guess it was. The body of my father laid in the casket. The lines were out the doors there. No seating capacity. People just standing around. I watched my mother broken hearted. I watched my sisters empty on the inside. But just when we needed him the most. Somebody. I don't know who it was. Just stepped up. And said, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one else could heal all our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. And like a choir, the unison fell in. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. And I'm talking about just as real. The presence of God. You preachers may know or you will if you pastor long enough. I stood behind the pulpits while my enemies sat before me. Some of those difficult times it would seem to others to preach. It became, Brother Hancock, easier to preach. When the controversy was high, when the conflict was on, when the battle was raging, it was just like I could feel him standing there. I'm going to tell you something. Hey, if you've ever felt his presence, you ought not get over it. Hey, you ought not take it for granted. You ought to praise God for his presence. 
I imagine David's reflecting on the times his knees was beaten. And a nine foot tall giant standing over there, the champion of Gath. And God showed up. I want to praise him for his presence. I want to praise him for his purpose. The Bible goes on to say, verse 4, For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. I want to say tonight that the church of the living God, Baptist people, ought to get excited again about what we're doing. I want to praise God that, that there is a divine purpose. We don't hear about it much anymore. It's all overshadowed by our personal agendas, our legacies. Help me. Our statues, our memorials. Last time I read it said, Thou shalt make unto thee any graven image. That's still in there. Somebody say amen. amen. I get nervous around these Baptist statues. Somebody say amen. amen. Is everybody okay? Yeah. I'm King James. Somebody help me. Yeah. Stay with me. It ain't about your legacy. Yeah, you understand, it's not about, I want to leave something, I want to leave something by, by name. It ain't about your name. It's about, it's about another name. Yeah. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name given among men whereby you must be saved. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I hear it all the time. You're going to get tired of promoting yourself. It won't last long, but this cause is a perpetual cause. I want to praise God. I want to rejoice. I want to, I want to render thanks that I'm hooked up to something bigger than me. That what I'm doing, it ain't about, I can fail. But what I'm hooked up to and the purpose that I exist for cannot fail. He said, because the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Time out. I want y'all to know I'm still excited about church. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. There would be no Christian school without a local New Testament Baptist church. There'd be no Bible college without a local New Testament church. I'm so tired of the schools like the dogs tail wagging the dog. Thank God that the preeminent, the preeminent ministry here, the purpose here is the North Valley Baptist Church. I said Baptist Church. And if it don't say church, it ain't a church. They, 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 first they drop Baptist. And then they drop church. Every one of them. Stay in here, bless God. I'm so tired of the rock. The oasis. The world outreach worship center. Somebody help me. Sound like a rodeo to me. I like independent, fundamental, premillennial, missionary, King James only, slobber slanging, sweat wiping, high blood pressure, bug eyed, hey, biscuit eating, gravy sopping, bus running, confrontational soul winning, hey, Baptist church, bless God. Hey, man, it's about a purpose. I'm still excited about church. And we're winning. Church is winning. Yeah. Come on, sir. Amen. We winning. You say you're not the biggest one in town. Won't make no difference when the horn blows. We'll let them and the beast of the false prophet pick up the payments on our building. Somebody say amen. Because we're winning. I'm going to rejoice in victory. Victory of his presence. He, he thanks God for the presence. He thanks God for the purpose. He thanks God for the protection. Verse 5, thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. Uh, o oh enemy, destructions are come uh, to a perpetual end. Thou hast destroyed cities. Uh, hey, he said the Lord's going to endure forever. But the enemy's going to lose. I just want to say God's blessed this nation. 
And I, it, it, we, have, we have God's protection. The loose guarded borders in which we live. Let, I'm not trying to scare y'all, but let's just be real. Somebody help me. Man, they screen me like I'm some kind of convict when I came on an airplane. We got Muhammad Ali screening me. Somebody say amen. She's got her burqa on over there trying to rub me down with a wand. I'm saying, you're checking the wrong person. It ain't Hudson. It's Muhammad we need to be worried about. Somebody help me. Amen. It, hey, if, if they had their way yesterday, would have been a Muslim holiday. Don't think they're not targeting us. Let, let me go on, let me go beyond the nations. Don't think the devil's not targeting you. Let me just say something. Don't you act so high and mighty. If your marriage has survived 20 years, you better thank God for his protection. Your wife's under the attack of soap opera. Your wife's under the attack of, of love novel. Your wife's under the attack of liberal preacher's friend. Hey, your wife's under the attack of Satan himself. Your wife's under the attack of belly staples, rubber band, bellies, diets, exercise, tanning beds. Look up in here. I got my belly staple that itches so bad. I got to eat a bunch of french fries to scratch that thing. <laughs> Y'all can tell I really pull it off the weight. <laughs> if you're still in the ministry, you ought to thank God tonight that the devil ain't done play. He's already got his crosshairs on you. Hey, he's already got landmines set all around the church. He's got booby traps everywhere he can set them. If you're still in it, you ought to praise God tonight you're still in it. I don't understand how we can't get happy. I wake up on Sunday morning, man, I get in it. Y'all ought to learn how to get in it. First thing I do is drink a pot of coffee. Don't y'all tell these bunch of health food nuts. By the way, you're not more spiritual than me because you weigh less than me or because you eat vitamins. If you knew the Bible, you'd realize that's a sign of the last days. They abstain from eating meats. My favorite verse is Acts 10, 13, kill and eat. You're not more spiritual because you got more children than I got. My quiver filled up with three and we forced one more in it. Don't act like you're spiritual. What was I talking about here? Getting ready to go. I drink. I don't. I don't absorb coffee from the bottom. I drink it. You wouldn't believe what these health food people do with coffee. It's a waste what they do with it. They send. I ain't even gonna tell you how they do it. God help us. But I drank mine. And before you start all that health food junk, let me just parenthetically throw a thought on you. Look up in here. The healthiest man I know died with carrot juice dripping off his chin in an airplane crash. When God wants you, you're going. It's called an appointment. It's appointed unto man wants to die. It's in the, I thought y'all was King James. If it makes you feel better to be skinny, skinny down. Somebody told me the other day, said, don't you hate being fat? I said, I hate being hungry worse. I drank a pot of coffee, get ready to go drink. I mean, I'm trying to get into it. I get in there and I'll punch track one on our on my on my C D player. And it'll come in there, Vesco Goodman, nineteen seventy two, back when she still wore long dresses, had that beehive hair. And the Goodmans have and she'll say, God walks the dark he the highways and by way. And I go, yeah, he does. I start feeling pretty good. I hit track two. And she comes on there. 
For the God of the mountain. I can see old Pigma came in there shooting her shoes across the floor. <laughs> it's still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right for the God of the good time. It's still God in the bad time. And the God of the day is still God in the night. I start feeling pretty good. I go, oh, yes. I hit track three, and they come on there in primitives. Well, I'm no longer an orphan. Somebody's rescued me. My clothes no longer are tattered. My family is royalty. I mean, by then, I'm about halfway levitating. I hit track four and it comes on. Preacher man says it's the end of time. And No, I don't. <laughs> But a country boy can survive. Somebody tell you. I feel something on shotgun rifle and a four-wheel drive. Hey Amen. Don't that spiritual God to strike you dead in here, bless God. I'm trying to get ready. You ought to get excited about God's stuff. I mean, you ought to get excited you still want to be here. If you've got any desire, I know a bunch of them's done thrown the towel in. I know a bunch of them's done quit. I know a bunch has done turned their back on their calling. Hey, Big Daddy, if you're here tonight and you wanted to come, you ought to praise God you wanted to be here. I'll rejoice because we're winning. Verse number 16 is interesting to me. The psalm is not only a psalm of thanksgiving. But the Bible said in verse 16, the Lord is known by the judgment that he executed. It's a psalm of transparency. Our nation doesn't always see God. Now, we look through spiritual eyes. We have a Holy Ghost who illuminates. Somebody say amen for the Holy Ghost. Don't y'all say Holy Spirit and try to play down. Don't y'all start that third person of the Godhead. Don't start that around me. He's God, the Holy Ghost. He's co-equal, co-existent. Don't try to make the Holy Ghost try to fit him in somewhere like a barefoot stepchild. Get excited when I say Holy Ghost. You ain't got to be Church of God to, to say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I say that a lot of professionals go to ducking like a, Did he say Holy Ghost? Yeah, Holy Ghost. What am I talking about? We have we have an illuminated. We have we have a we have a light that reveals some truth that that, that, that that illuminates the revelation. Thank God we can see things that the world doesn't see. But when the Lord executes His judgment, the world gets to see God. I think the world sees God in His approach to the world. Nature itself doth declare there is a God. The Bible said that the Lord hath his way as whirlwinds and the clouds of the dust of his feet. Quit giving the devil credit for everything that happens in nature. Even insurance companies are wiser. They call them acts of God. The Pentecostals, oh, that was the devil that done that. I don't think it was the devil that sent an earthquake to the White House about two weeks ago. It happened. I was there at five point something. We felt it, dude. I was preaching in North Carolina. We had this, me and Brother Johnny was in a, in a wagon with a pair of mules. Y'all think I'm making it up. It's a God's truth. We, we, was, we was driving a pair of mules up a country road when that earthquake came. And that ground shook. We was in that old rickety wagon. We couldn't feel it anyway. But man, those mules jumped and jerked. And they was broke. That man said, man, he ain't never done this. He, he said, man, he moves crazy. We rode to the next house. That woman come out, eyes bigger. I said, did y'all feel that? Said it shook our living room. Said it shook our ceiling fan. Said the chairs began to rattle. Said it woke my husband up out of Lazy Boy. It must have been an earthquake. <laughs> you wake up a coon hunter, been hunting all night out of a Lazy Boy. About that, you done done something. God's moving. Somebody say amen. <laughs> hey, don't tell me that's all the devil's work. God reveals himself in his approach to man. Say what you will, it's not grids anymore, it's AIDS. 
gay infection related disease but it was too incorrect so they moved it to the word AIDS what it is it's a judgment of God on immorality these venereal disease sexual transmitted disease we can send a man to the moon we've got satellite radio that we can p pick up bluegrass music all the way from California to Kentucky look up in here but we can't we can't make enough penicillin we can't conjure away. Hey, man, in all his wisdom, the chemists and scientists with all their knowledge, hey, they can't find a cure for immorality. You know what that is? That's the approach of God. He reveals himself. God begins to show himself in this text. He says, man, he executes his judgment. He's known by the execution of his judgment. Not only his approach, his apprehension. Let me say that, that God, God has always won and God will always win. Don't think for a minute numerically we're, that, that that's, that's, that's the issue. We're going to win whether it be few or large. He's able. I mean, he's able. Gideon and 300, the walls of Jericho. It's a, God's always been outnumbered by the world, but he's never been outpowered by the world. Paul and Silas didn't have enough influence. They didn't have enough money hey, to bail themselves out of jail, but they had enough power to pray the bars loose. Are you listening to me? God's always going to win. His apprehension, he going to win. I, I got to looking at this text, it's his authority. Notice, O oh Lord, big L Lord, arise, O oh Lord, let not man prevail, verse 19. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O oh Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. It was Nebuchadnezzar way back yonder. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I don't know where Daniel was. Probably gone to some kind of a ecumenical service. <laughs> but there was three that wouldn't bow. And Nebuchadnezzar shows up in the midst of their stand. And God, the fourth man in the fire, he looks over and said, Did not we throw three in there, but there's four? And one of them looks as he is a son of God. You know what he did? He revealed himself in judgment. He said, you ain't going to get these boys when you fire. Y'all know the rest of the story. He made a decree. Nobody's going to make fun of the God of Shep. If you do make fun, if any family makes fun, their house will become a dunghill. Let me say, nations that mock God, be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If he sows to the flesh, he'll of the flesh reap corruption. If he sows to the spirit, he'll of the spirit reap life everlasting. So let us not grow weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. If we faint not, it ain't time to quit. It's time to win. Win at home. Well, we're outnumbered. Win anyway. You never know how powerful one grain of salt can be. Stick your hand in a sack of McDonald's french fries with a hangnail. It don't take a shaker of salt to bring pain. One small granule of iodized salt will put enough pain in your hangnail to bitch you to pull it out of the sack. You'll be amazed what salt can do. You'll be amazed the effect we can have scattered abroad. Hurriedly, it's a psalm of thanksgiving. It's a psalm of transparency. But he concludes by saying the nations are going to know themselves but to be men, but you're going to be God. Jot this down in your margin. It's a psalm of triumph. We're winners. I want to remind you, I don't care who gets voted in next time. We're still winning. I mean, if, I, if, if out of hell Hillary Clinton gets voted in, we're still winning. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We can't be worse cursed. We're already being ruled by a Muslim. We can't be much worse cursed than being ruled by a woman. Somebody say amen. amen. Is everybody okay? Amen. Just a little parenthetical thought. <laughs> a little nugget of political truth. I'm almost through. Can y'all handle about two more minutes? 
Really? I, some of y'all want to go, see, because y'all still mad about the Indians. Look up in here. Hey, I'm glad the Cowboys won. Amen. Triumph. We ought to, we ought to be glad for previous victories. If we just use our scripture and never go any further than the lids of this holy writ, there's enough victories that we have a part of that we could be shouting it out to the wee hours of the morning. I mean, previous victories. You know, like, you know, like, let's just say like creation. Evolution, you're out of your ever-loving mind. Once I was a tadpole, long and thin. Then I was a bullfrog with my tail tucked in. Then I was a monkey hanging from a tree, and now I'm a professor with a Ph.D. It takes more faith to believe in Darwinism than it does to believe in the beginning God. A canonized Bible. 66 books. There in that holy place, that representation of the church, in that tabernacle, they had a table of showbread. It was 12 loaves. They couldn't line those loaves up 12 length. The length of the table was, so they lined them up six by six. 66. Long before Moses penned the first word of Genesis, the Holy Ghost said, it'll be 66 canonized books. Y'all don't act like y'all knew that before you come in here. <laughs> M.R. DeHaan didn't even know that. 66, 66 illuminated books. Hey, I'm going to tell you, y'all get excited over the Bible. If you hold a King James Bible in your lap, if there ought not be any time in church that you just couldn't say hallelujah. And let me just say a word about saying something. Can I say a few more words? I, I want to do right. Am I do too long now? If you tell me, I'll stop right now and go outside and finish preaching this thing. We, we've let this hand clap and steal our vocabulary. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Well, he don't deserve a hand clap. That's a mockery. That's borderline blasphemy. He, he, hey, he demands a living sacrifice. He wants a life, not a clap. We've lost our vocabulary to this. Every five minutes. We used to say hallelujah. And if you're spirit filled, it was with an ER on end of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We used to have words like amen. You could say it lots of ways. Hey, man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Bless God. Somebody told me the other day, said, Bless God's Christian cussing. It showed his ignorance of the Scripture. I don't care what kind of titles the dude's got. Ignorance of the Scripture. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that. That ain't cussing. That's preaching. Bless God. Bless the Lord. That's, that's Bible, friend. Don't y'all bow up. I'll go back. Oh, amen. amen. We've lost our vocabulary. We've lost our vernacular to a bunch of <laughs> Makes people want to vomit. I believe that's as carnal. That's as carnal. Listen, I believe you could get by better spitting tobacco juice on the carpet of this ch church, bless God, than a bunch of hand clapping. Somebody say amen. It's fleshly. It's man worship. Just because y'all don't like it, I'm going to preach a little bit longer on it. You don't, you don't bow me up like that. I come a long way to preach this message. I come too far for you to think you're going to shut me up. Hey! I was at a meeting the other day. They didn't believe in no women saying nothing, no, no enjoying worship. Don't get quiet. And, and, and the guy right before me preached all against everything I'm for. I'm thinking like, what, does he not know... Everything I promote, he was against. I'm like, dude, you out of your mind or something if you think I'm taking that. 
so right in between, they started recognizing all the youth groups. You know, they said, got to keep silent in the church. All of a sudden, they said, then this is brother so-and-so, the youth director. And all the girls, woo! That's my youth director. Woo! I said, hold up. What about that silent in the church? If y'all believe that, she couldn't sing. Don't get nervous. I, they know what I believe. I was preaching for it. He's been to our church. Is everybody all right? I was preaching. Hey, look up in here. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. I like my wife enjoying church. Somebody say amen. It, it, this is a psalm of triumph. Everybody ought to get in on praising God for what he has done for us. Ma'am, if you're holding a baby on your knee, you ought to praise God for that baby. Hey Amen. Uh, Y'all still here? Yeah. Lord, praise God for the possible blessings. There's some things I'm praying for that haven't happened yet. I'm raising four young ones. I got a daughter, 21, Tanil. She's not a shouter, she, she, but she's spirit-filled. Tanil knows big woods from brush. She knows a sapling from a saw log. I mean, she can get around spiritual stuff and she can tell when it's real and when it's not, when it's manufactured, man worship, all that manipulation, she knows. But other two daughters are shouting Baptist girls. They, they don't care if you like it or approve. If it gets on right, they'll embarrass you. <laughs> no unintelligible tongues unless you can't understand southern dialect. Somebody say, I'm talking about spirit to old time worship. I, I want to praise God for where they are now. But I, I, I envision them yoking up with the right kind. I walked through the doors into the ready room and I saw the Treber family portrait, a, a collage of, of pictures, and it showed him and his family and their grandchildren. And in my mind, I said, I, I want mine to marry the right kind. I can see Tennille with, a, with an independent Baptist boy. He don't have to be a preacher. He don't have to be a school teacher. He don't have to be a missionary. In fact, I, I hope he can make a little money and, you know, give to the retirement fund. Somebody say, <laughs> God knows I don't want to. Somebody say, amen. But, but, but I, I can see, I can see some grandchildren sitting on my knee that know something about the choir songs that was just sung. Instead of a bunch of, shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord. The roof, the roof, the roof is on. In my mind, I, I, I want to praise God that it could be that, that I have a, 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 uh, 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 a heritage to come, a, a child, grandchildren to come that will know something about the old time way. Let know something about them songs that start off. Dun 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 dun. Amen. I felt God on that. Possible thing. Our church isn't what I want it to be. I envision some possible victories for Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. Some of you are satisfied where you are, and you're never going any further. You're never going any further. You're going to have to see bigger. It was a triumphant psalm, a psalm of the present, the psalm of, of, the, of the possible, but the psalm of the promised. Let the nations know. Well, they don't know it now. But for too long, just any day now, Oh, gravity's going to lose her pull. Oh, what a shout will rise across the vaulted skies when Jesus comes in the clouds. We'll leave all pain and care and endless glory share when Jesus comes in the clouds. When Jesus comes in glory bright, we'll leave our lowly shades of night. 
All sorrow will be past. Eternal joys at last. When Jesus comes in the clouds. I'm listening for the trumpet. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. We're not to be troubled. We're winners. Well, I know, but you didn't set up your literal kingdom, Jesus. He said, disciples, I know it, but I will. But, but I'm not the mayor of Jerusalem. I, I know, but you will be, Peter. So let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I, I will come again. Have received you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. I want to just enjoy the, the promised trial. It's going to happen. If some morning I am gone from this pale of tears, I'm going home to live again. I am going on a trip. When I say goodbye, I'll live again over on the other side. I'll live again. Over on that golden strand, I'll sing and shout with a mighty angel band. You'll see me rise beyond the starry skies. I'll live again over on the other side. I am going on a... I feel pretty good now. <laughs> It won't be long. One day the trump of God's going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. And he says he's coming with a shout. I, I know that rubs the further wrong way on some Bible colleges with a shout. It is King James. It is scriptural. You know, that, that kind of preaching about old time worship. I get around some people, they say, well, you're just rubbing our fur the wrong way, all this shouting and shouting. And <laughs> Billy Sunday told that crowd, they told him, said, Billy Sunday said, the crowd don't like it, you're rubbing the fur the wrong way. Yeah, Billy Sunday said, tell them to turn the cat around. <laughs> Amen. What you going to do with that word shout in your Bible? With a shout. If you're dead now, you won't be then. We're winners. As we bow our heads and close our eyes, I want you to reflect right now on some previous victories.